I'm Kristen Higgins, a thoracic radiation oncologist at Winship Cancer Institute of Emory University. In this case, we'll discuss a patient with a left lower lobe primary, as well as a left supraclavicular lymph node and multistation mediastinal lymphadenopathy. This case is interesting in that it's a good example of using two isocenters in order to effectively deliver radiation therapy to the involved nodal stations separately from the primary and sparing the contiguous lung in between these regions. This patient is a 58-year-old Indian male, a current smoker who smokes a few cigars monthly. He is married and living with his spouse. He is in good overall health with a performance status of ECOG zero. The patient reported back pain and ultimately a PET CT revealed a nodule in the lower left lobe of the lung. This patient was found to have multistation N3 lymph node involvement. He had an FDG avid supraclavicular lymph node as well as prevascular 4L and level 5 mediastinal lymph nodes. You can see these lymph node regions here on the accompanying PET CT scan. One thing that's interesting for a patient that has prevascular or level 5 lymph nodes, these typically are not accessible via a mediastinoscopy or even an EBUS for staging. Level 5 and level 6 lymph nodes typically have to be addressed with a Chamberlain procedure, but they can also be staged with a thoracoscopic VATS procedure where your surgeon can perform a biopsy to confirm pathologic involvement. This patient was felt to be unresectable by our multidisciplinary team due to N3 lymph node involvement. In terms of delivering radiation to these areas, it's important to be cognizant, particularly with a supraclavicular lymph node, of the dose to the brachial plexus. A radiation oncologist should always contour the brachial plexus to ensure that you're not delivering a dose that's too high for this organ at risk. This patient was recommended to undergo curative intent concurrent chemoradiation to 60 gray with weekly radiosensitizing carboplatin and paclitaxel. This patient was treated with IMRT. Older technologies such as 3D conformal radiation would not have allowed for treatment with two separate isocenters and the dose to the lungs would have been much higher, potentially violating the doses to the normal tissues. Here you can see his radiation treatment volumes. We utilized two distinct isocenters because the primary tumor is located in the lower lobe of the lung, and the lymph nodes are located more superiorly in the upper mediastinum and into the ipsilateral supraclavicular fossa. By using two separate isocenters, you can deliver full-dose radiation to the involved disease but spare the contiguous lung in between these regions. Here you can see the dose volume histograms for this patient. One DVH represents 3D conformal technologies, and the lower DVH represents IMRT or VMAT. You can see here that adequate doses to the planning target volumes are achieved with both technologies. But notably, the dose to the lungs is much lower with VMAT or IMRT. The V20 here is 23%. Compared with 3D conformal radiation, the V20 is 30%. This is a clinically meaningful difference. The mean heart dose as well as the mean esophagus doses are also lower with the VMAT IMRT plan compared with the 3D conformal plan. This patient tolerated concurrent chemoradiation very well with minimal toxicities. We were overall able to reduce the total dose to the lungs using a VMAT plan, and I think this contributed to the way that he tolerated his therapy. His performance status after concurrent chemoradiation remained in ECOG zero. After completion of concurrent chemoradiation, the patient underwent a diagnostic CT. You can see that he did still have a very small nodule with some associated radiation changes, but his mediastinal lymphadenopathy nearly completely resolved. So the lessons learned here are that with advanced radiation technologies, you can spare the dose to normal organs, including the lungs, for somebody that has a lower lobe tumor and mediastinal lymph nodes extending up into the upper chest and into the supraclavicular region. 